Hello, everyone, and welcome to Faith and Friends. Thanks for spending this part of your day here with us on TV44. I'm Jennifer Beck. Mark Kuntz is here. Andy Lynch is away for some special FCA training, and so we welcome, yeah, we welcome Zach Bowers to the Red Chairs. I'm good to have you. I'm becoming a semi-regular on this show. It's kind of a good feeling. It's elevating my friend status. You know, I, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You know, these red chairs are actually named Nolan. That's the style. <laughs> Random fact of the day, I suppose. I think it'd I think it be sound better to welcome you to the Nolan set than the red chair set. I'm honored to be on the Nolan set. I hope that we have a one well, we do have a wonderful show t <laughs> um, today and a lot of different stories. So again, thanks for having me on, guys. Coming up on today's Faith and Friends, an amazing story of perseverance, love, and faith in Christ. Local pastor Brandon Green has been seen on TV44 before, but tune in for his most personal interview yet, as he and his new wife spent the past year going through health trials, but seeing God's hand despite the difficulty. Jennifer will get her hands into the dirt, literally, as she's talking gardening and vegetables, and maybe you'll have the urge to start planting, so be sure to stay tuned. And we have another giveaway this week. Hopefully you saw my interview with Bernard Ondiek last week here on Faith and Friends. We're giving away copies of his book, Bernard's Vision, coming up later in the show. You'll find out how you can win your own copy. And we mentioned Andy momentarily. Well, he is at FCA training this week. We do have a great fill-in right here with Zach. We've got a short message from Andy, who's coming to us from Kansas City. Hi, Jennifer. I'm having a good time here in Kansas City with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes training. Learning lots of good things to build into the lives of youth and coaches when they come back to Lyme. So hopefully I can pass some of that along on Faith and Friends. But for now, reporting from Kansas City, Missouri, Andy Lynch. Well, we certainly miss Andy back here. And I'm told that there's also some really good food that he's had the opportunity to dive into. So eat it up, Andy. We'll look forward to having you back here soon. Well, let's move into today's scripture passage, Romans 5, 1 through 5, which says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Pastor Brandon Green and his wife Natalie know a lot about tribulations, but they also know about perseverance and hope. Imagine getting married and just a few short weeks later getting a positive diagnosis of cancer and not knowing the future. Here's Dancy with more. Well, I am so thrilled to have Pastor Brandon Green with me. Brandon and I um, have talked before on um, several shows, and since then, though, there has been much that has happened in Brandon's life, which we will talk about now. Brandon, I am so happy to see you. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. It's yes, good to have a birthday. I'm sure it is. Yes, I'm it sure is. it is. Um, and he says that because um, really less than a year ago now, you mm -hmm. were diagnosed with cancer. Yes. You are a cancer survivor. I'm a cancer survivor. And um, you have quite the story to tell now. Um, it's amazing how it all played out because mm -hmm. some of the biggest moments of your life were happening at the same time. Yeah. You were getting married. Yeah, yeah. So can you take us back to, I guess it would be May, because did you first start seeing symptoms at that time? Yeah, I was in a conference in Tennessee, and you know, it was like the story straight out of the old pages. It's the best of times, and it's the worst of times. I'm at this conference, I'm excited, I'm getting married, and I just woke up one morning, was in the shower, and I noticed a large mass under my left arm. It took me by surprise. I immediately called my fiance, but I, th I thought, well, you know, I'm not gonna make a big deal about it. So I didn't right. say anything to anyone else. Mm -hmm. Went home, got it checked out. Um, actually, I couldn't get into my doctor, so I got into urgent care. And they said, uh, you know, we don't really think, you know, this is anything but an infection. Put me on an antibiotic, but it didn't go away. So um, in a course of uh, getting married, having a fantastic time, um, just being married and the excitement of it all, I came home. And being home. pastor of a church yeah, on and top pastoring, of that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I came home and immediately the doctor said, you need to go get this biopsy. And it was like, it happened so fast. Everything just was a rush of emotions and a whirling. and. 
A week later, I found out I had cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Were you feeling ill during your wedding? <laughs> no, that's the funny thing. The doctors have all asked me, how are you feeling? I'm telling you what, uh, we had such a fantastic honeymoon. Um, and we had, were on the go, I mean, we had been on the go for actually a few weeks beforehand, just pastoring, getting things ready for the wedding that, um, you know, it really didn't affect me physically. So besides the large mass, uh, it was a little uncomfortable in like walking or running because it was so large that really? you felt the friction of it. However, you know, I didn't feel sick. And not especially tired? No. Mm-mm. No. Wow. So I'm sure then, yes, exactly. That diagnosis had to hit you especially hard. It hit me like a cup of cold water in the face. Yeah. You know, none of us are exempt from the things that life offers. None of us. Nope. Doesn't matter how good or how righteous, how holy you are. I learned a long time ago that it rains on the just and the unjust. I'm so glad you say that because there are people that feel that way, though. Oh. That you know they must have done something wrong, oh. or I've done everything right. Why me? So it happens to every single person. That's life. It really is, and you know sometimes we can become kind of callous. We can offer cliches when we're not on the other side of yeah. whatever the the trial or the trouble is. And unfortunately, um, we can present um, almost a callousness about how we speak to people that are going through just highly sensitive situations. I remember calling um, my old professor at my Bible college that I attended and I said, listen, I don't even feel like reading my Bible or praying. I feel so sick while, while I was in chemo. And she said these words to me and it was so comforting. She said, let the word that's been deposited in you read you. Oh. <laughs> she said, and then the Holy Spirit promised that he would pray through us. It's oh, not even yeah. our own righteousness or activities or works. You know, it's just being surrendered to whatever God's doing. And mm -hmm. I just really learned the power of his mighty, amazing grace. I am so sure. And, and Having said that, though, okay, so you, you're diagnosed after the most exciting time of your oh, life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you feel abandoned, though? Did you feel angry? No, and here's the thing. Um, I know other people have that emotion, and I'm here to testify that God is good in spite of everything that goes bad in your life. Mm -hmm. I have seen God so wonderfully do the miraculous in my life, I've seen him uh, just do so many things for me that I felt unworthy of. And so it, it, it almost uh, offends my heart when people in ignorance place things on God as if it was God's fault. Mm -hmm. But we live in a sin fallen world. There's a real devil, there's the real world, and there's the real flesh. And I tell you what, I never once got angry at God, blamed God, but I took the position, I'm gonna be thankful. Okay. I'm gonna praise Him. And there is so much power in that. And there's so much power in agreement. My wife and I, we, 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 we got an agreement. We prayed. My mother, we just worshiped. I mean, in the hospital, they had a piano. The worst thing that the devil could ever do is put a piano in a cancer hospital because I made my way with the IV pole. Oh, but what joy you gave the rest of the folks there. I and mean, I just, I worshiped because I don't know what else to do, but I'm so thankful because he gave me a second chance at life. He did. He, he really did. did. He, he did. And, um, and as you said, you had other people that were your warriors that were yeah. with you, Natalie and your mom. Uh -huh. And I'm sure, you know, many of us were praying for you. And oh. I, I hope that you felt enveloped in all yes. of that, oh. you know, because we did. We really, um, and we still do. We care so much about you and, and your, um, your health. And um, what was that like, you know, summoning up that, that strength? Because when you go through chemo, and you know there are folks out there that have been through radiation mm -hmm. on top of it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the doctors had said when he said chemo, I thought, okay, I can get this done at Lima, but this 
still small voice said, I want you to go to Columbus. So I obeyed the nudge, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just a nudge that he comes and he gives us the wisdom. So the doctor said, I don't want to take a chance because you have a highly aggressive form of cancer. So we're going to aggressively treat this. This means a whole week in the hospital, you are there getting continuous 24 hour bags of chemotherapy and then uh, and some other uh, treatment. And then this will be every 21 days, six treatment cycles. So it totally took over our lives. Uh, I couldn't pastor. I couldn't be the husband that I wanted to be. It was like I was on the shelf. And all I could do was surrender to the, the will of God, to the grace of God. And, and, you know, the one thing I will give you is I learned the truth of Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. I don't say this arbitrarily as if, you know, I got in a car accident and I know it's going to work out for good, but I say this because there's a real purpose that I am connected to, that you are connected to, that you that are watching are connected to. The When you're connected to the eternal purpose of God, no sickness, no devil can take your life because the purpose of God will keep you on this earth. Okay, now for the people out there though that have faithfully gone through all of this and they're still, mm -hmm. um, they come through it and, and the prognosis is still not good. Mm -hmm. And they have done what you have said, they mm -hmm. have been, there still is good though to that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there is, that doesn't mean that they failed in their faith walk or that they were not, mm, no, that no. they were lacking or. No, no, in, in fact, you know, I, I just truly believe that our times are in His hands, our purpose is in His hand, and I really believe that I see a lot more faith in the person that goes on to glory as if dying is a punishment, dying and going to heaven is a punishment. Right. And unfortunately, sometimes that's what we project when someone passes away from cancer or long-term illness. But I want to tell you this, I see more faith and there is a crown of life awaiting them. This is just a hotel. This thing is not our home. This is the only hell that the believer will ever know or experience. Mm -hmm. And for the one that doesn't know Jesus, this is the only heaven that they'll experience. Amen. Brandon, I could talk to you for another <laughs> another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am so glad that you were with us, and thank you for sharing your story. There's so much more I'm sure you could offer, mm. and what, what powerful testimony you have now. And yeah. um, the ministry has expanded greatly through your story. Yeah. So thank you so very much, and um, we will continue praying for you and your family, oh, your beautiful you. wife and your mom. Thank so, you so much. Yeah. To God be the glory. Definitely. All right, back to you. Well, thank you, Nancy. Last week on Faith and Friends, we introduced you to Kenyan Pastor Bernard Ondiek. Since 2000, he and his wife have worked with thousands of orphans, providing them a place to live and a Christ-centered education. Now, the entire story can be found here in Bernard's Vision, The Quest of a Kenyan Pastor, written by Beth Ann Morgan. Now, we have several copies of this book, and one of them could be yours. Here's how you enter into our drawing. Simply send your name, email address, home address, and phone number, plus your favorite Bible verse to faithandfriends at WTLW.com. We'll draw on May 4th, so you have from now until then to enter. Moving now from books to gardening. Planting season is upon us. Maybe you're thinking about planting your own garden, or maybe you need to find someone you can have help you with that. Well, Jennifer is with Joni Cabarra from Burgust Farms. Jennifer? Thank you, Mark. Well, it's time to get a little bit dirty. I think my hands are going to get dirty in a moment. It is planting season, indoor planting season, if you are into gardening. And we have Joni Cabarra from Burgess Farms, like you said, Mark, here with us to talk a little bit about getting things going and getting ready for the season. Joni, you have brought a wide array of stuff here today. Tell me a little bit, what, what's the green stuff we have over here? Um, that is a Chinese cabbage or an Napa cabbage. Um, that'll be ready to go out here pretty soon. And uh, is this something you started indoors? Yes. Yeah, we start all this indoors um, just so we can get it out sooner, get it going so we can all start eating. That, that is very helpful. That is good. What else do you have here for us? I've got a... Um, those are green beans. Green those beans. we don't plant inside. We plant outside. The, the ground is still so cold from our winter that it needs to warm up quite a bit more before we can plant those. And 
All right. get good results. And we also have a few other things over here. These are things that you will actually plant, is that right? Right, yeah. We have, um, these are chives, which uh, if you've not started with any kind of herbs, they are great because they just grow like crazy and you really can't kill them. Mm -hmm. have, haven't been possible. We have onions. These are onion plants and these will grow into the nice big sweet onions that everybody likes so well. Um, and then we have the onion sets, and these, these are, can go in the ground now. Uh, and these will just make you nice green onions, uh, but they won't develop a big bulb on them. Okay. All right, so you have here a, I'm not sure what this would be called. You've got, you got a bunch of dirt is what you I have. I got a bunch of dirt. <laughs> this is a flat. This is, um, I think it's 105 cells in here. Um, and I have zucchini seeds. Zucchini seeds. And course we're behind in planting with the weather so we brought it so you could help. Oh so today <laughs> I get to help the Cabarras with their planting which is great. Um, I am all for eating really really healthy food but I'm not so good at growing things. <laughs> for That's some why reason, we're here. I forget to water things. Um, all right so we have zucchini. Now right. I have to tell you Joni if I was getting my zucchini seeds, I probably would try to go to the store and get a bag of them. But you were mm -hmm. just handing me a bunch of seeds. Where, did you save these from the pasture? Where did you get these? No, these aren't saved, uh, but we buy them by the fat five pound bag. Um, we, we buy untreated seeds, so there's no chemicals in them. Ah. Uh, and of course, everything we do is non-genetically -genet modified. And we'll talk about Berger's so. Farms in just a moment and find out a little bit more about all the things that the Cabarras do. But let's go ahead and start planting. Okay. Um, we already have your dirt in here. We've we filled it up all the way and then took another tray just like this and pressed it down so that our dirt is compacted a little bit. So okay. all you have to do is go through and put go one through. seed, which these are easy. I could have brought you little radish seeds, which are <laughs> very tiny. So one seed in here. Right, you, you don't even have to press them down. Oh. You just set them on top. All right. Well, just set them on top. Yep. Well, that's that's easy. Well, mm -hmm. after several hundred of these, one right after another, you, you don't have the patience to <laughs> set them quite so perfectly. So if I was doing these in my house and I was starting these at home, where would be a good place to, to uh, position them in my house so that they get a good growth start? Um, if you're just doing it in your house, find a nice sunny windowsill. Uh, but yes, watering them is important, and you would have to remember to keep turning your tray because they will reach for the sun. How do you water something like this since your compartments are so small? A little sprayer, a little hand sprayer. How often do you need to be watering? I just watch the dirt. Just watch um, the dirt. If the sun is shining beautifully in your window, you're going to have to water them a couple times a day because these little tiny cells will dry out really fast. So you mentioned that the ground is pretty, um, it's pretty frozen because of our winter. Is that going to mean a delay in outdoor planting this year? Um, yeah, the ground is not frozen anymore, uh, but it is still cold. And um, certain crops, you can plant your uh, cold crops, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, lettuces, the Chinese cabbage, things like that can be planted now. Uh, but the tomatoes, any kind of squash, uh, any of that stuff needs warm, warm soil. The roots don't like to be cold and you'll just stunt them and then you'll be way behind. So I'm in the process of planting something like 120 zucchini plants. I would say that's probably a little excessive for a home garden, but you do things, you're not just planting for yourself. Tell us a little bit about Burgess Farms and what you offer. Uh, we have several farmers markets in the Lima area that we sell our produce at. We also have a uh, CSA program, which is Community Supported Agriculture, uh, where you sign up and you receive a box every week of produce. Um, these 100 you're planting uh, will be part of about 1,000 hmm. of these plants. 1,000 zucchini plants. Mm -hmm. what, other, what other produce can you think of that you know you're going to have as part of your um, CSA program this year? We have the onions, of course. Our onions are very popular. A lot of tomatoes, peppers. Uh, we're trying some new kinds of peppers this year. Uh, I always like to experiment with the hot peppers. Uh, cabbages, lettuces, uh, gonna try some more herbs this year. And what makes you different in a sense than say just going to the grocery store? You, you mentioned before that you buy seeds that haven't been treated. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you strive to have natural methods on your yes, farm? Yes, we don't use um, 
any unnatural chemicals. Uh, we do everything. <laughs> You're missing holes there. Oh, whoops. Sorry. <laughs> See, I'm failing. I can eat the food, but I can't plant the food very well. <laughs> uh, we don't use any of the man-made chemicals on our crops. We keep them all natural. Uh, we fertilize daily. If somebody has some questions about your CSA program, if they want to sign up or find out more information, uh, where would you recommend they call or where can they find you? Um, they can call us. Uh, the easiest is probably, uh, oh, there's, <laughs> sorry. Well, that's all right, that number on the screen, is yes, that a good one? That's fine. Um, there's also the website or there is a Facebook page. If you just search face, uh, Burgess on Facebook, we're there also and we can answer all your questions. Trying to, I'm trying to finish this up. I'm getting behind. So this is, I'm only doing a hundred of a thousand of these. That's, that's a lot of work. How many hours in a day do you think you put into getting oh, your farm going? We don't count yeah. because if we counted the hours, we would be very tired, but we're usually up before the sun and uh, in bed long after it sets. Mm -hmm. Well, if you are looking for a resource for some great uh, healthy food, then Burgess Farm CSA program made you just for you. I have done it. Did I miss any You've of them? It. No, They're all in it. there. Now we put dirt on top. Here we go. See how easy it is? I feel yeah. like a and kind just, of a just spread successful gardener here. If you have any more questions, you can give them a call. Find them on Facebook, Burgess Farms. And thanks so much, Joni. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing these grow and seeing what comes from them. Well, we didn't talk about garden art, but that is something you can also add to your garden. And Mark and Zach actually have some garden art that was recently donated for the TV44 auction. What do you have there, guys? Well, thank you, Jennifer. Yes, indeed, we are holding garden art. This is garden art? This is garden I art. I thought this was the trophy for winning the Easter egg hunt. Would you like to thank anyone? Maybe do you have a speech prepared? Well, there have been so many folks that have allowed me to take the garden art slash Easter egg championship home for three straight years. Mm. But in honesty, this is a beautiful piece of art that has been donated by Tossed and Found. It's just one of the items that will be found in this year's TV 44 auction. Well, with spring just underway, you probably are not yet thinking about fall. And don't worry, <laughs> we're not trying to speed you through spring and summer. But we realize now is the time for spring cleaning which means now is the time to think about donating to the TV44 auction. We're accepting everything from furniture, automobiles, tools, and antiques to collectible items and unique creations just like this garden art. And yes, we have room to store the items all the way until September, so don't let the size of your donation stop you. This year's auction is September 6th, and our offices are open Monday through Friday, 9 to 4 p.m. You're welcome to call ahead to make sure someone is here to accept your donation, which is tax deductible as allowed by the law. Well, this is the week. <laughs> yeah. Power Team a little bit more impressive than <laughs> snapping pencils and ripping paper, but Power Team Live from Bluffton is airing right here on TV44, so be amazed by their strength, but be changed forever by their strength in Christ. That's right. You can watch the Power Team May 2nd at 9 p.m. and May 3rd right here after Sports Report at 10.30 p.m. Also go to WSN.TV for additional airings of the Power Team. Also coming up this month on TV44, David Lawson, how to prepare yourself for God's calling. He was at uh, Converge just a few weeks ago. You had a chance to see him. That's right. An incredibly deep message where he talks about the disciplines that we need to practice in order to gain discernment. You're not going to want to miss it. Yeah, originally presented at Converge 2014, David Lawson issues a challenge. It is truly a challenge for all of us. Don't miss this dynamic talk mm -hmm. right here on TV44, Tuesday, May 6th at 10 p.m., Saturday, May 10th at 1230. Number one, prayer. Discipline. You must be in prayer, period. The Lord never told us to pray. He assumed that we would pray. He said, when you pray, pray this way. The prayer is the, it's the one thing that the disciples came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray. They didn't come in and say, would you teach us how to cast out demons? Because that looks really pretty amazing when they go screeching out. Ah! Said, that's, that's cool. They didn't say that. They said, would you teach us how to heal lepers? Because I love it when the fingers grow back. Would you teach us how to raise the dead? Because that, that just rocks my world. I mean, that guy's dead. And you're... No, they said, would you teach us to pray? I don't know what his prayer life looked like, but it was so unbelievably fantastic that the disciples skipped everything else and said, I don't care about that. Teach me how to pray. Looking forward to seeing that entire David Lawson uh, um, talk coming up. Really some powerful stuff. 
You don't want to miss that. Well, we continue to spring to life here at TV 44, springing to new life in Christ during our spring campaign, and we only have two weeks to go. And we are getting closer and closer to that $50,000 goal. In fact, we're three quarters of the way there, 75%, actually a little bit past the 75% mark, thanks to you. This is a partnership and you are appreciated. Oh, without a doubt, guys. I have a few names here. Uh, here's a donation from Butler, Indiana. Incredible to see the, just the immense span that WTOW has in uh, preaching the gospel. Mary from Bell Fountain, thank you for your uh, pledge. And Jerry from right here in Lima has left us a real nice message as, long, as well as some prayer requests. And we thank you for those as we do pray over those and we care about everything going on in your life and want to pray for you here at WTLW. All kinds of wonderful, uh, just it's so appreciative to not only get stacks of cards hmm. indicating that you're partnering with us, but also, like you said, those great messages. You've got a few names as well. Sure. Uh, Michelle from Van Wert, Joan from Menden, and uh, also uh, Ron from Vaughnsville. Certainly want to thank those folks. And remember, there is still time to become part of the team. Uh, you can send in a one-time gift. You can also set up a, a recurring donation to the station as well. You can donate securely online at WTLW.com. Write us at 1844 Beatty Road, Lyme, Ohio, 45807, or call 419-339-4444. And once again, we thank you for your part in the 2014 Spring to Life campaign. As Zach mentioned, we do receive and go over your prayer requests. And recently, we have received many prayer requests regarding health needs. We do read every one of these corporately. Internally, we have a group that prays for you. But we want to take a moment and pray specifically for some of you today. Zach, what are some of those recent <clears throat> prayer requests that we have gotten? Well, a few that we have recently got. One woman writes us to say, please pray for healing from seizures. Another request, please Please pray for my granddaughter. She has breast cancer is, and is only in her own early 30s. Um, sadly, something not that uncommon. Yeah, another request we actually hear quite often is please pray for healing from depression that is plaguing my son. Let's, let's take these and all these health-related requests before our Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Lord, we, we just lift up all these folks that are hurting, Lord. Uh, pray for guidance and direction. We pray for those that are seeking medical help, that uh, the doctors and nurses and practitioners can, can have wisdom and healing. And we know you have the ultimate hand of healing, Lord. Just lift all these uh, folks up to you. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Of course, you can continue to share your prayer requests with us. You can email us at WTLW.com or call us at 419-339-3000. Mark, what are some of the other ways that we can stay in touch? Well, certainly you can follow us on Twitter, uh, Bowers Z, Jen Beck 44, Andy Lynch 44, myself, Mark Hoots 44. Those are our Twitter handles. Also on Facebook is both Andy and Jennifer. And for some extra encouragement, go to the website, WTLW.com, for Andy's Points of Life devotional, as well as Jennifer's One Minute of Inspiration. And don't forget, you can rewatch classic editions of Faith and Friends on our website, WTLW.com. I actually well. posted something new in my one minute of inspiration. It's how only long did that been... take you? One minute? <laughs> it's only been how many months, but there is something new there. There's a reason to go. <laughs> I like Mark's version or recommendation rather last time. He said, if you read it twice, it can be two minutes of inspiration. There we go. Well, it is time for us to say goodbye. Next week on Faith and Friends, I interview Bill Harris as we look at biblical mothers in preparation for Mother's Day. Also, Mark takes a special look at Marion Local's sports history, and Andy's back. And finally, we will leave you with our scripture of the week. Oh, did I take some words out of your mouth? Did you want to say something? No. He's so excited that Andy is coming back. We just want to celebrate. I wonder if he's going to bring that Kansas City, any Kansas City food. <laughs> some of that famous barbecue from Kansas City. Well, we want the Bible to be famous in your life. We want it to take first place in what you read and have it be a gu daily guide for you. And so we leave you with this, Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation pers produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Good things to remember as we go through trials. If you're going through trials, God is there with us and he wants to get us through them. Keep that in mind this week and hope to see you next week on Faith and Friends. <laughs>